you must have seen the script tag in any HTML document. The script tag is extremely important because it adds client-side JavaScript to your website or in simple terms, it allows you to add the JavaScript functionality to your website. Now, in modern websites, the scripts are quite heavier than the HTML itself, which makes their download size larger and processing time longer. So to give you a proper overview, what generally happens is, when a browser is loading the HTML and it comes across a script tag, it cannot continue to build the DOM until the script is executed. So basically, the browser must wait for the script to download, after that, it executes the downloaded script and only after all that's completed, it can move on to process the rest of the page. Now just by this, you can already notice the importance of where your script tags are located in your HTML page. Since its position in your HTML page can highly affect the rate at which the DOM or your page gets processed or loads up. This leads to two important issues. Number one, if your script is placed at a position where there's HTML content below it, the scripts can't see those DOM elements below it because it will only allow further processing of the page after the script has downloaded and executed. So, if there's any function in the script that requires to manipulate or access the DOM elements present below the script, it will face a problem in executing those. And the second issue is that if there's a bulky script at the top of the page, it blocks the page entirely until the script has completed downloading and executing itself. So users won't be able to see the page content until the script at the top of the page has completed executing because the DOM would not have loaded until then. Now generally as a workaround what people do or used to do is that they used to place the script tag at the bottom of the page by which I mean at the bottom of the body tag. Upon doing this, the script can see elements above it and it doesn't block the page content from showing. Because in this case, the script runs only after the DOM or HTML elements have loaded themselves. But this solution isn't perfect because the browser downloads the script at last after the entire DOM has been processed. And this is not efficient because if the HTML documents are long enough, then this might strike a noticeable delay. Because after the long HTML code loads up, the script starts downloading and executing its content. Such things are invisible for people using very fast connections. But many people in the world still have slow internet speeds and do not have the perfect mobile internet connections. So to avoid all the above issues mentioned, we make use of the two script attributes named async and defer. Before we talk about async and defer, this example on the screen shows how normal scripts work as discussed above. And we will visualize this example with that of async and defer to understand the difference better. In normal scripts, the HTML processing starts and when the browser comes across a script tag, it pauses the HTML processing and downloads the JS script. After downloading is complete, it moves on to execute the JS script and only after that, the remaining HTML is processed. So now, let's talk about scripts having the async attribute. If you add async to a script, then the following happens. The HTML processing starts and then when the browser comes across a script tag, the JS script starts to download in the background along with the processing of the HTML. And once the JS script is downloaded, the HTML processing is paused and the downloaded JS script is executed and only after that, the remaining HTML is processed. Whereas, scripts having the defer attribute work a little differently. So if you add defer to a script tag, then the following happens. The HTML processing starts and then when the browser comes across a script tag, the JS script starts to download in the background along with the processing of the HTML, similar to how it worked in async. But the only difference is that when the JS script is downloaded, the HTML processing isn't paused and instead the browser waits for the entire HTML processing to complete and only after that, the downloaded JavaScript is executed. So, in async, the JS script is executed right after the JS script has completed downloading and after the execution, the remaining HTML is processed or parsed. Whereas in differ, after the JS script is downloaded, the browser waits for the remaining HTML processing to complete and once it's completed, the JS script is executed. Now, in async scripts, it's important to remember that scripts having the async attribute always runs in the load first order. So what that means is, consider the example on the screen. Here, you can see two scripts, long.js and small.js. Now, whichever script loads up first, will run first. So let's consider small.js loads up first. Now, even though small.js is written after long.js, small.js will still run first because it was the first script to be loaded as per our assumption. 
So this is what I mean by async scripts run in the load first order. There is no guarantee which script would load first when there are multiple scripts and it could always vary as in any script loading first might not load up first again if we reload the page and try again. So that's why they are async or asynchronous because they can run in any order depending upon the script that loads first. But in scripts having the differ attribute, it's not like that. Scripts with differ never block the page and scripts with differ always execute only after the DOM or HTML is ready as we had discussed recently. Now, unlike async attribute, differ scripts always keep their relative order, just like normal scripts. So if we have two scripts, say long.js and small.js and considering small.js loads up first, what differ does is even though small.js loads first, it still waits and runs small.js only after long.js has executed. This is what I mean by saying differ maintains the relative order of the scripts. So we have control over executing the scripts in the order we want. Now coming to the final question, which one to use? Now for most cases using differ is suitable since we might want to control the order of the scripts being loaded. The async attribute in script tag could be suitable when we integrate an independent third party script into the page. For example, ads, as they don't depend on our scripts and our scripts shouldn't wait for them. So this is all about async and differ attributes and how they are different from the normal scripts. If you enjoyed the video and gained valuable insight, then don't forget to like and subscribe for more as it motivates me to bring up more content.